Hello and welcome to this service on Palm Sunday. This is the start of Holy Week when Christians around the world focus on the culmination of Jesus' mission here on earth, which will take us to the cross on Good Friday and then beyond to the empty tomb and the hope of Easter morning. This week, of course, uh, will feel quite different to other Holy Weeks and other Easter's because uh, as many Christians around the world, we are confined to our homes as we seek to battle this uh, coronavirus. All the more important then to celebrate the true meaning of Easter, which goes beyond bunnies and chicks and chocolate eggs, great as those things are, but reminds us that no matter what we face in the world today, there is one, Jesus Christ, who has overcome the grave to give us new hope and new life. Today we're going to hear the account of Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem as he finally kind of goes public on who he is, the King of all kings. And people throw their cloaks and palm branches on the ground in front of Jesus as he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. So we have the palm cross here and perhaps you may have a palm cross at home from previous Palm Sundays and if you do you might like to have that with you as a visual reminder of what Jesus does uh, in this Holy Week. Later in our service we're going to look at the kind of king that Jesus is because he was not the king that people were expecting. As our service starts let's be still just for a moment uh, and then I'll open in prayer. Behold, our King comes to us, humble and riding on a donkey. Lord Jesus, we welcome you into our homes and into our lives today. Meet with us, teach us and inspire us by your Holy Spirit. As we set this time aside today to be transformed by your love, because we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. And so we're going to open our service by singing uh, together. Uh, you might like to sing the words that are going to come up on the screen or perhaps just allow the, the music to uh, inspire you today. But we're going to sing Here I Am to Worship. darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here I am to worship here I am Here I am to worship, here I am to bow. 
with all that's going on in the world at the moment uh, and all of the bad news that seems to be bombarding us, we thought you might appreciate uh, some good news this morning. So we're going to go over to our good news studio for an update. Good morning and welcome to St. James Church GNS Good News Stories. I am John Snowcone. And I'm Huey Jedward. As we are all stuck inside watching the rolling news, it can be really difficult to see the positives in this world. We have been asking people to send in their good news stories so that we can give thanks to God as a church for what has been happening in our community and around the world. So let's look at what's been coming in, John. First, we have to say a big happy birthday to Bella, and here she is. She has turned seven last week. Wow, happy birthday, Bella. We thank God for the amazing person that you are. And now we are going to one of our reporters in the field, Karen Fuster. Karen, are you there? Can you hear us, Karen? My good news is about the weekend. On Saturday, Becca, lovely Becca, gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, and we all give thanks for that. And Sunday was my birthday, and it was a very different birthday, but I was able to talk to all of my grandchildren on Zoom, Skype, and whatever, and Noah, my three and a bit year old grandson, now thinks that all birthday cakes are for him because he not only blew out the candle on my cake, which he had in his hand, he immediately consumed the chocolate cake it was attached to. And that now is firmly cemented in his mind. I love my grandchildren to bits and I give thanks to God every day for them. Wow, what great news. Thank you, God. Next, we have a report here from Suzanne and John Kimber who would like to say thank you to God for how people have really been pulling together and helping one another through this difficult time. Suzanne says, John and I have been self-isolating for three weeks now, and it has been wonderful receiving messages, helpful tips, recipes, funny jokes. Did you hear about the man who ate ten yogurts? He was mullered. And having uplifting chats with neighbours and friends. Suzanne finishes by saying, best of all is remembering that as Christians, everything works to the good of those who love Jesus Christ. Amen to that, Suzanne. We also have a report from Claire Jupp, who says, some good news for me. The current COVID situation has meant I've started using my landline phone more, was beginning to think of getting rid of it. For good chats, one such was with my godmother, who I haven't spoken to for a year. It was lovely to hear her voice. She lives in Newcastle, and I don't know when I would next see her, so having lots of time to speak on the phone was a tonic. Is that a gin and tonic, Claire? <laughs> And finally, we leave you with a feel-good story and a video of a paramedic who set off to work for her shift this week and the whole street applauded her as she left. Let's take a look now. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> I'm pulling a look right here. <laughs> oh, dear. I must say, it really was amazing to hear so many people cheering and clapping for the NHS workers and the key workers around the country. We thank God for all those people keeping this country going. Make sure you're ready to clap every Thursday evening at 8pm. I've even heard some people are getting their pots and pans and wooden spoons out.
Well, that is all we have time for this week on GNS. But if you have any good news stories that you think should be featured on this show, then please do email it to this address below by Tuesday night at the latest. Thank you, God, for all the good things you have blessed us with this week. Help us to be on the lookout for where you are at work in our lives and the lives of those around us. Amen. I've been Huey Jedward. And I've been John Snowco. Stay safe and God bless. It's good to hear some good news, isn't it? We're going to spend a moment reflecting on the past week, the past few days, and where we might have done things that perhaps we regret. Maybe we've said or, saw, or thought some things that haven't honoured God. And we're going to bring those things before our loving God and receive the gift of his forgiveness and his love. And we're going to use the words of a beautiful hymn as our confession this morning. So we're going to sing, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, Forgive our foolish ways. Today's reading is from the New Testament in the book of Matthew, 
chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. If you are struggling to find it, please use the contents page at the front of your Bible. As Jesus and his followers were coming closer to Jerusalem, they stopped at Bethpage at the hill called the Mount of Olives. From there, Jesus sent two of his followers and said to them, Go to the town you can see ahead of you. When you enter it, you will quickly find a donkey tied there with its colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks why you are taking the donkeys, say that the master needs them and he will send them at once. This was to bring about what the prophet had said. Tell the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you, he is gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt of a donkey. The followers went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt to Jesus and laid their coats on them, and Jesus sat on them. Many people spread their coats on the roads, other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The people were walking ahead of Jesus and behind him, shouting, Praise to the Son of David. God bless the one who came in the name of the Lord. Praise to God in heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, all the city was filled with excitement. The people asked, Who is this man? The crowd answered, This man is Jesus, the prophet from the town of Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, all of Jerusalem would have understood that Jesus was making a claim about himself. He was claiming to be a king. And the reason for this is right in the middle of that passage that Maisie has just read to us. I wonder if you heard it. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. And it says that the reason he did this was to fulfil a prophecy. Now, a prophecy was a message from God and a man called Zechariah, who was a prophet who lived over 500 years before Jesus was even born, predicted that one day the people of God, called Israel at the time, would overcome their enemies and find freedom. And in the middle of his prophecy, which you can find if you turn back in your Bibles back to the Old Testament, you'll find the book of Zechariah. And in the middle of Zechariah's prophecy comes this same verse. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. If you want to look that up, it's Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Now, Jesus' followers had spent three years hearing him teach and seeing him perform the most amazing miracles, but he often told them to keep quiet about the fact that he was the Messiah, that he was the chosen one sent to set Israel free. But here he rides into Jerusalem at last. This is, if you like, Jesus going public. And he, he is going public so that all people can recognise who he is. No wonder the people of Jerusalem celebrated. And for the crowds who weren't yet followers and who were living under Roman occupation, they were longing for their freedom. And here Jesus is acting out this prophecy that said, I am the king who's come to bring you victory. No wonder they were excited. But unfortunately, the crowds were so excited to welcome Jesus as king that they didn't necessarily pay attention to his message. And his message was that he came not as a conqueror, not as someone who was going to uh, overpower the Romans, but as someone who comes uh, to bring peace. You see, if Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem on a horse, then he would have been saying that he was coming as a conquering king, because back then uh, a horse was seen as an animal of war. But instead, Jesus rode on a donkey which means I come in peace. So Jesus wasn't the kind of king that the people of Jerusalem were expecting. I wonder what you think of when you think of a king. Perhaps uh, you're old enough to remember our last king, King George VI. Maybe you think of an Egyptian king wearing a, a fine gold headdress. Maybe you think of uh, the Lion King, a big proud lion. I wonder whether you imagine that a king has to be wealthy, perhaps like our own queen with castles and palaces and cars and royal robes. 
I want you to have a look at the verse that's going to come up on the screen from Matthew chapter 8, verse 20. And if you're watching this with others, you might just want to pause the video for a moment and discuss amongst yourselves what you think this verse says about Jesus and wealth, whether Jesus was the kind of wealthy king that perhaps we might imagine. Or if you're at home on your own, perhaps just spend a moment pondering what Jesus models when it comes to earthly riches. Do you think that people were expecting Jesus to be the kind of king who had uh, armies of soldiers and servants to order around? Well, again, let's have a look at this uh, next verse that's going to come up on the screen from Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And again, you might like to just pause the video and discuss this uh, with those around you or just spend some time silently uh, thinking about this verse and what it says about the nature of, of Jesus as a king and whether he is someone who uh, has power over other people or whether he's someone who comes to serve others. And then finally, I wonder if you think that people were expecting Jesus to be powerful, to sit on a throne and to wear a royal crown. Let's look at this last verse from Matthew chapter 27, verse 29. And this reminds us of the type of crown that Jesus wears. Again, perhaps just spend a few moments discussing this with others or reflecting on the type of crown that Jesus wears. The people were certainly expecting Jesus to be the king to set them free from the Romans. But the Bible shows us that Jesus was actually a selfless, servant-hearted and sacrificial king. He came to set people free from their sin, from their selfishness, and to bring them peace and reconciliation with their Father God. He came not to rule a country, but he comes to rule in people's hearts. So I wonder whether, just as those people did in Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago, whether uh, as they were living under the fear of Roman occupation and they welcomed Jesus into their lives, we who perhaps today are living in our own fear, fear of a coronavirus, fear of uh, being living in isolation, whether we might welcome Jesus into our hearts here, in this moment, on this day, in our own homes, that we might receive him as our selfless, servant-hearted, sacrificial king who comes to give his life so that we might know freedom. Let's pray together. We receive you today, Lord Jesus. Come into our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Free us from fear. Forgive us when we have lived without you. And bring us life in all its fullness. Because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Perhaps we might like to use this next song as our response to all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. We're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm 
found was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that We pray for the nations of the world where wars and famine and poverty continue to take lives, but whose plight has disappeared from our screens and perhaps from our minds as we battle with our own fears. Thank you that you never leave us in our suffering. Today, in our own community, we remember before you Oliver Strode, 
We ask you, Lord, to be especially close to Oliver's family and friends as they come to terms with his tragic death. Give them hope in their grief. We also give thanks for the life of Mary Parrott, who died in the early hours of Saturday morning. Father, we thank you for her faith and service in your church here in Rowledge. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with Brian and the wider family at this difficult time. We pray also for uh, the family of John Pitt, father to Teresa, father-in-law to Chris, and grand grandfather to Emily and Jessica and Rosie. Lord, would you be with the Harris family as they mourn John's death? Thank you for his life and for all he meant to his family. And be with us today, Lord. Bring us your hope. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as we uh, prepare to take Holy Communion, uh, as we sing this next song, you might like to find some bread and some wine uh, and so we can be ready to share communion together. But we're going to raise our hallelujahs to the King of Kings. And let's sing together. Raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm
in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar receiving Jesus as our own personal king today and whether we've done that before and we now live in a relationship with God through Jesus or whether we're doing that for the first time today Jesus said that when we meet together we should share bread and wine and remember Jesus body and blood broken and shed for us to reconcile us with God and so we're going to use a very simple prayer this morning from the Iona community in Scotland and perhaps you might like to join uh, in this communion prayer today. So come you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come not because I invite you but because the Lord invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Lord Jesus, present with us now by your Holy Spirit, for all that you have done and all that you have promised, what have we to offer? Our hands were empty, our hearts are often full of wrong things. We are not fit to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but with you it is mercy and the power to change us. So, as we do in this place, what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us your body and blood, healing, forgiving and making us whole, and that we may become for you your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. Amen. And so among friends Jesus gathered around a table. He took bread and he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Later he took the cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God, made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you. And so we say together, O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And so using the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is your Lord, coming to you in bread and wine. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And so you might like to share the bread and the wine uh, in your own home. 
And as you do, simply take the bread and say the body of Christ broken for me, the blood of Christ shed for me. And if you need to pause the video for uh, to take as, as much time as you need to do this this morning, then please do. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And now having received the bread and the wine, a prayer after communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Take us, shake us, remake us. Fill us with your life-giving presence. No longer is what we have been important. It is what, with you, we can be, starting today. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is a beautiful hymn, King of Kings Majesty. So let's sing this hymn together. King of Kings, Majesty. God of heaven, living in me, gentle Saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne, your majesty. Joining us uh, next Sunday will be the Bishop of Dorking, the Right Reverend Dr Joe Bailey-Wells, 
uh, and she'll be our guest preacher for our Easter service together. But we end now with a closing prayer of blessing. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. And may the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ that we may share his glory set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.